Bedrock. Brand new music, well, sort of, from the all-nude Fetus Review, Bedrock, the title cut from the brand new EP. Before that, the chills from their three-song EP, House with 100 Rooms, again, the title cut, and that's now available in your stores. We have been playing it for some time as a test pressing because they brought it up when they were in town for the new music seminar. Loudspeaker started the set off from their Psychotic Machine 12-inch with Living with the Dead. Actually, incorrectly, I said that Alien Sex Fiend started the set off from the Impossible Mission going out by request. My brain is in the cupboard above the kitchen sink, and my guest in the studio today Today is Clint Ruin of Scraping Fetus Off the Wheel, or the All Nude Fetus Review as it stands now, I guess. Uh, that's the Fetus All Nude Review, actually. You've oh. transposed the words. A okay. Bit. Yeah. Beg my pardon there. Yeah. So, uh, is the band actually now the Fetus All Nude Review? Uh, yeah, the band of the mind. The is band of the hand. Is there no more Scraping Fetus Off the Wheel? Uh, yeah, there is actually. Uh, on October the 12th, there'll be the last ever release of Scraping Fetus Off the Wheel, a 12 inch called Ramrod. Why then, will that then that will be laid to rest. Why did you decide to lay that project or that name as it is to rest? Um, because it had fulfilled its uh, its its merit. Really, I mean, you can only do you know. Well, I you know I feel with the fetus names, you know, I can only do so much, and it expresses everything that I want within that concept. Hence the the termination of many of the names that I use, because uh, you know each name has a different purpose, and when those purposes are fulfilled you know i lay him to rest and start over is there a different personality behind each name different as i say different aspects of the same personality um but you know i like to throw a bit of hubbub into the foray and uh make people scratch their heads or start over again or just make things difficult for myself or for them too mm. from a comprehensive whatever. point of whatever, view. whatever definitely whatever, you know. so you mentioned band of the hand before what's that about Band of the Hand, like, uh, you know... Like See that movie? Cut no, I know nothing about the movie. I'm, I meant it as actually a reference to masturbation. Okay. <laughs> now, we were talking about some of the lyrics off mic before, and you said you got into a lot of trouble in England for the uh, lyrics saying, A woman's place is on my face. Well, that was that, at the time that I said that, that was uh, less a lyric as much as a, uh, a raison d'etre. And... Uh, I did get a lot of uh, flack because of that comment, which was on uh, national TV in, in England. Um, I think people really kind of, uh, uh, they, uh, yeah, they couldn't handle that too much. I and mean, when it, Actually, it is a very pro-feminist statement, as far as I'm concerned. I would definitely have to agree with that. Yeah, it is. I mean, hey, you know, I, you know, I love women. Stating the obvious, though, you know. Yeah. So uh, what program was this in England? Uh, the Tube. And uh, how did that go? Oh, it was okay. This is a long time ago. Uh, I did one song and one interview, and uh, it was as could be as expected. You know, Nothing as quote unquote national as uh, you know the big top of the pops things. Or yeah, anything? the same thing. It was national, you know, that thing. Yeah. But the tube seems like it's a little bit more alternative, a little bit yeah, more but of an it edge was, to it rather yeah. than. But it's, it, it was still national. It was still aired aired nationally uh, at you know in prime time and so on. But they you know they stretched their their things a bit. More, you know they stretched their boundaries a bit more. I mean I did I did one song and they accompanied uh, one of my instrumentals theme from Pigdom Come with a uh, a, a 1920s French film about a mad scientist who wanted to set fire to the Eiffel Tower and destroy it and so on and that was accompanied by uh, one of my pieces and you know it looked cool. Was that your idea or theirs? Uh, it was kind of a co-production. Using that in a live show at all? Uh-uh. No, one time only. I and mean, it was it, it was stock footage that they had access to but we co-edited it. So now what's the story with the Fetus All Nude Review? You said it was about, well, somebody told me that that was the name you were going to take on for a touring band consisting of you and Lydia Lunch and a couple others going through England about five years ago or so, and someone else told me that the material for this was actually a couple of years old, just never finished. That's all rumors made up by other people, I'm afraid. Okay. I mean, none of those things exist. Well, I mean, let's clarify those rumors. And well, get the Fetus All Nude Review basically in initially took shape by um, being... Uh, the undertaking of a bunch of kind of 60-year-old guys in London who formed a, a band in like a strip joint and I was going to be doing a set with those guys and uh, it never really came about due to the fact that I couldn't really pull it off money-wise. And uh, But the concept 
remained uh the initial thing was going to be an ep of four cover versions uh which i can't even remember what they were now one of them was held by james brown and uh I think maybe Hey Big Spender was another one, I mean, which is an obvious kind of choice. But the idea was to to create the most visceral kind of disgusting kind of scratch and sniff strip show um, with me fronting it in the most disgusting kind of manner possible. Um, lots of uh, green slime on white tuxedos kind of thing. And that kind of thing never got off the ground but conceptually obviously it festered in the back of my mind and such was the fruition of the new EP which has has uh, been my new cesarean birth. Why didn't you do any of the covers that you just mentioned before on the EP? Because by the time that it was possible for me to have done them the idea had gone stale and really the uh, you know I only find v validity in doing like one cover per every 100 original songs and that's why I've only ever done one cover you know because I've only done a hundred songs mm. so how long was this record in the making uh, well it was started around the 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 bare bones of it was started around about the same time as the initial nail recordings which was probably around about February 85 and then th it it, uh, it sat there and grew moss for a while and then around about last July, I started working on it further and then remixed it around about last uh, September. It took me 80 hours to mix. And uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's the bad seed gone wrong, really. I mean, it's like, uh, it's kind of like one of those things, you know, you leave a potato at the back of your cupboard and uh, you look at it uh, 18 months later and it's like, a totally different monster. I mean, that's uh, that's what this record is. So you have a negative point of view toward this record? No, very positive. It's my favorite record. You know, I love those potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> now, how come Nail came out so quickly after its beginning, and this took so long to do? Aside from the financial problems with the original plan and stuff. Well, like Nail that. didn't come out that fast. I mean, none of my records come out fast. But I mean, as compared to you, so they were both pretty much started. The bare bones for this were started the same time. Well, that that. Um, this this is a product of the same sessions kind of thing, but uh, I did you know I did kind of complete the nail stuff at that time, and that was done, and came out like maybe four months after the fact. But there was a lot more wheeling, and uh, you know, I don't really like to go into the bare bones of the process that it takes me to go through to get a record out because it's too boring and. Uh, who cares, you know, basically, if you see a fetus record in the shops, it's out, you know, it doesn't matter when it was done, you know, if it's out now, I believe in it now, and that's how I feel about it, you know, basically, you know, although, you know, Bedrock is my favorite record yet that I've done. What's the story with the two different versions of Bedrock? Well, one of them is uh, the definitive version, and the other version I really felt the need to do, kind of when I brought babes back to my apartment, and it was four in the morning, and I wanted to seduce them, and it was sort of like the thing that you put on the turntable, because it's like very seductive and uh, quiet, and you can really go down on them. That being the second version, the one that comes, I yeah, guess, the last song on the Bedrock EP. Strip. Right, yeah. with the, yeah. just the pretty much very minimalistic beat and yeah. vocals way down low. It's the Pandy Raid version. <laughs> so now you said you have something coming out, as you said, the last project of Scraping Fetus Off the Wheel, Ramrod. What's that going to be like? Uh, it's kind of... Uh, it's it, it goes through a thousand different changes. I mean, it's like, it's very... It's kind of really catchy and trashy at the same time as being really... I don't know, it's everything rolled into one. Just a 12-inch? <laughs> uh, it's, it's an EP. It, uh, the the B side holds like th another two great songs and uh, box boxhead which I used to do live a lot and uh, a, a song called uh, smut which is an instrumental but the A side is called ramrod and it was recorded in November eighty five actually so uh, it's uh, but you know it's it uh, sounds even better today you know. okay so why don't we take another listen to the bedrock EP this is diabold in musica. Uh, I think you've mispronounced I think it a so bit too. Early. I didn't write uh, that. It's hard. actually called Diabolus and Musica, and okay. it's based I was on. close. Well, it's based on a, a an interval uh, which was banned by the Catholic Church for five centuries as being uh, an. Inter it, it splits the octave into two um, half wise, and was thought to evoke Satan 
um, and uh, you know you would come under a lot of uh, flack if you used this chord. And really, it w- it it is supposed to uh, evoke satanic hallucinations and has done without uh, any interference from myself. Do you have any uh, satanic connections yourself? Me? <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so from the Bedrock EP, this is? This yeah. is Diabolus in Musica. On the new afternoon show, WNYU with Clint Ruin from The Fetus All Nude Review. Diabolus in Musica. I think that's how you pronounce it. We've gone over this a couple times now. My lesson for the day. And uh, that's from the All Nude... Wait. The Fetus All Nude Review's latest EP, Bedrock. We have Clint Ruin in the studio with us today. That's correct, Lee. And uh, we were talking about numerous things, including your uh, partner in Wise Blood, Roly Moisman's other projects. as Moseyman, a producer. that is. Yeah. Moise- Moseyman, I'm sorry, yeah. as a producer. And, you know, I was curious to know, do you spend your uh, time working basically on the uh, Fetus stuff, or have you thought about going off and producing some other bands? Uh, I have produced other bands uh, like Coil and um, who else? Don King and. Um, Did you work with Bewitched at all? Or? Yeah, Bewitched. Uh, that was a remix. The one side I did with Rolly, one side I did myself. And uh, for Bible, I produced a 12 inch by them, which is not something that I usually uh, admit to. But. Uh, didn't think that turned out too good but yeah at this point i'm not really interested in production at all because it seems to be a process whereby you sell your knowledge or you sell your talent or, and anyone can make a rock band sound good it's it's more of a craft these days and i'm more interested in turning it into an art so anything that i want to undertake is going to be more of a collaborative process as opposed to production it would be like production and like co-writing or uh, like playing on and so on yeah. it's uh, you know a redundant thing to me you know it, especially in the light that you can make so much money off it it makes me sick you wouldn't like to grab some of that cash if somebody came up to you and said hey we'd really like you to produce this album take a hundred thousand dollars here uh i'll just take the hundred thousand <laughs> and i'll see you later yeah i mean i'm not i'm not interested in selling my talents where do you do most of your recording uh it depends. Uh, previously, I've done most of it in London, but now I'm uh, increasingly becoming based in Brooklyn. Adequate studios out there? Oh, yeah. yeah it sounds like you. At BC, I've been uh, doing s- doing some stuff in. Um, and that's cool. But I haven't really done any new stuff for quite a long time due to uh, difficulties with my record company. Current one or past ones? or Current what? Record companies? Yeah. Uh, my current one, you know, and, uh, you know, anyone who's willing to throw a Molotov cocktail into uh, their head office if they're in London uh, totally has my uh, my blessing. Which label would that be? Some Bazaar? Yeah. Scum Bazaar, <laughs> as I affectionately refer to them. Now, haven't you been with them for quite some time? Too long. So where does the problem arise? Uh... Their time is not long enough to go into the details, and they're too boring as well. But basically, anyone out there who is entertaining ideas of being on some bazaar, I totally uh, discourage you, and so on. And I, 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 you know, if the FAA re- regulations weren't so stringent, I would go into more details. <laughs> but I really can't at this point. All right. Well, so I'll protect myself as well as yeah. you know this radio station, and I will go into something else. So. uh now, after Ramrod, what's coming out? Is there going to be a Fetus All Nude Review album, or is the name going to change? Are you going to put something else out under a different name? No, after the uh, Scraping Fetus Off the Wheel 12-inch, there's going to be a 12-inch under the name The Flesh Volcano, which will be um, a lot of material that I started in 84 with Mark Armand and finished off in 86. And that will, that's a three-track EP with a cover by Robert Williams, which will come out in around about November. And hopefully around about October, I'll be starting a new studio LP, a new Fetus studio LP. And also later this year, I'll be putting together a Fetus double LP compilation of a lot of unreleased stuff and a lot of released stuff, which will come out under the name Fetus Inc. And both of those LPs should hit the stands theoretically by the middle of next year to tie in with my world tour. So the double LP compilation thing, that's going to contain... 
previously released singles, B-sides, and then unreleased stuff? Or? Yeah, a lot of the 12 inches that I've done over the last few years, plus... Some of which are of, hard to get now. Yeah, I mean, they shouldn't be hard to get, but... Uh, you know what they're like, these scumbags. Being the music industry. Yeah. Yeah, sort of. Well, you know, whatever. What do you have in plan for uh, the world tour? Where are you going? Uh, I'm going to the world. Any place in particular that you're going to, that you know of right now? Japan, Sweden, Amsterdam, Ethiopia. All of those places. South Africa. And yet, Sun City. And yet somehow, strangely, so much more. How long do you think that's going to take? A year? Yeah, something like that, yeah. Have you arranged a touring band at all yet? I'm in the process of doing that now. It's going to be a lot more elaborate than before. Um, I'm going to be carrying a stage set with me, which I'm working on with Mark Pauline. And, uh, you know, this it's going to be a lot of machinations on stage. And I'm, I'm going to be taking the whole review with me so that the entire evening will be traveling. And uh, all of you that hate my guts, the feeling of, is mutual, of course. <laughs> Because you know, I, I know they're out there. I, I just felt a few vibrations down the little holes in the microphone, you know, and I was just like really going, you know, I know this, there's some asshole sitting in Jersey, and I'm going, you know, too bad. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so I missed the show at the Limelight. I guess it was a year ago now, maybe even more. And, uh, it was actually uh, more like uh, two years ago, I think. Really? That mm. long ago? I'm losing 18 months or something. Losing track of time. But uh, you played alone, from what I understand, with, you know, tapes and the backing music or whatever you used to be the band but it was a very intense experience from what I'm told are you not going to do that again are you going to have uh, performers actually with you or are you going to have people playing live musical it's parts gonna, it's going to it's going to incorporate everything that I've done before plus much more I mean there's going to be a lot more live derivated um, music and you know there's going to be live music plus tape music plus um, just it's going to be a total you know mixed media assault on all of your senses and it's going to be physically threatening thing which is like the, the the you know that's the that's the real priority of the thing that is uh, that it is like physically threatening experience as well as a an audio uh, extravaganza but will it be more physically threatening than say the run dmc beastie boys concert well, there's going to be more grabbing of the dick, if, if, that's, if that's what you mean. Ah, uh, that's pretty hard to believe, actually, because there you have, like, three solid hours of non-stop grabbing. Yeah, but I'm going to have six people grabbing my dick. At the same time? <laughs> yeah. Including yourself? Yeah. Okay, so that's definitely something to uh, look out for. Yeah. But I don't see how it involves uh, audience physical possible violence. Well, it is actually going to be Beastie Boys and Run DMC are going to be grabbing my dick. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds pretty cool. Do they know about that yet? They do it constantly. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So, uh, what else was I going to say here? I don't know. The record came out. It's in the stores. How long has it been out now? A couple weeks. I don't know. It's been about uh, a week and a half out here, I guess, and maybe uh, it came out like uh, f four or six weeks ago in England. Uh, so, it's heavily available. And Ramrod's coming up. Any New York dates that we can look forward to? Or you're not going to tour at all until the world tour? No, I want to do a New York date, but it's like extracting blood from a stone to get one lined up these days because all the clubs suck and there's only you know the, it, you the know, Ritz right, right yeah and uh, we've done that so what can you do I mean I'd like to play here but it will have to be under the perfect situation so we'll see how about videos are we going to be scraping fetus off our TV sets anytime in the near future well there's going to be a wise blood live document of one of our shows from Berlin last year on our Yankum Crankum Don't Stick Around to Thank Him tour uh, which is called Yankum Crankum Don't Stick Around to Thank Him and uh, that was recorded in Berlin it's just basically a document of one of our shows I guess it'll probably be out by the end of the year along with a live cassette of the same document which will be a bit different but basically the same old stuff you don't think you'll do anything from the new EP on video? No. I mean, I'm not a video kind of guy. I don't know. Whenever I hear the song, the uh, A-Side 45 version, that is, I just picture like you in front of the Rockettes on the giant Radio City Music Hall stage. Yeah, but in a lot of ways, to place kind of a literal translation onto a piece of music is to diffuse the kind of power yeah, and impact yeah. that can actually be... Uh, be wrought from it and uh, and also who's going to play an eight and a half minute video for god's sake <laughs> well they could play the short version but there's no there is no short version i mean i can't shorten you know i've made you know it is short 
you know. I'm sure, like, the record company... I shortened, I shortened it down from 30 minutes. But I'm sure if it ever got to that stage where there was a video or anything, you know, the record company would send them the uh, commercial edited version, so on and so forth. Well, there's no such thing as a commercial edited version of my stuff, you know. I mean, Definitely. they get the real thing or nothing, you know. Man, commercial, commercial. <laughs> Have you been working with Lydia lately at all? Uh, we work hard. Musically, anything that's going to come out? Yeah, we've got an EP coming out called Sting Fist, which is in the process of uh, completion at the moment. It's been something like five years in the making. It might come out for its fifth anniversary, but there's, uh, we've got three versions of Sting Fist at the moment. Uh, there's still a few more uh, pieces that have to come in and uh, dissect the whole thing up a bit. You know, one piece called Bigfoot and uh, a few other different things. It's... It, it should be listened to without probably the same kind of stipulations as you would listen to any other piece of music. You know. As such, we are going to in include some blood or acid with every coffee. Some what? <laughs> Nothing. Any other th projects that you've been involved in coming out? Um, Sounds like you're see. flooding the market with Clint Ruin material. Hey, I'm a human flood. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, no, that's about it at this point, yeah. I guess maybe a reissue of the Fetus of Excellence, which I've been trying for for some while, but uh, that's about it. The the new Fetus ones, the one with Mark Armand and uh, the one with Lydia, uh, secret collaborations in the next year, which yep. will come to fruition. You know, we'll next find time out we about them yeah. as more details are released. Yeah, they. You know, basically, I'm I'm getting more into those dissections and uh, nice stuff. So we've been talking all about devils and evils and this and that and the other thing, but uh, the one thing I wanted to ask you is the lyrical content of Bedrock. I mean, what's this Santa Claus fetish? I'm making a list, checking it twice, finding out just who deserves to die. What's hey, I don't know where these devils and evils come from. <laughs> you know, I, I am, uh, you know, I am saintly personified. You know. <laughs> but uh, making, I mean, it, it, that's an, you know, an, you know, that is what it is. It's an ironic statement of uh, a bit of lyric. Ironic play on a children's theme, so to speak, something like that. Uh, it is what it is. I mean, you know, take 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 what you will from it. You know, one man's Santa is another man's, you know, Satan. <laughs> hey, an egg. Uh, <laughs> so do wow, we have some heavy? Do we have some records to give away or what? Oh yeah, tons. How many? Six. Six. All right. So, uh, do you have any questions? that we can ask the listeners something that they would know but not immediately okay yeah uh, am i cut or uncut all right that's the question is clint cut or uncut the number is 212-998-1818 we'll take the first six callers who can tell us the answer correctly Obviously, and you can use your imagination but you have to have a pretty good reason for it all right the number is 212-998-1818 we have six copies of the bedrock ep and from that ep we're going to close it out with the uh what is this one sit on my face version or would you say go down <laughs> on me version this is the penthouse version bedrock strip it's to play to be played at 4 a.m for uh for uh general lubrication purposes okay clint ruin from the fetus all nude review among many other projects thanks for stopping down today no problem lee good luck in the uh, future and we'll look for ramrod in the store soon hopefully eat it baby all right from bedrock this is the version of Bedrock that we just talked about. Uh, Bedrock script. Okay, the number is 212-998-1818.